r forward slash plays, a social experiment created by Reddit in 2017. The premise was simple, place tiles on a canvas. This went as well as any social experiment could go. Communities came together to make something great and pixel by pixel the canvas was filled. But communities also took the opportunity to write over others' work. Our place would last 72 hours before being closed forever. Or so we thought. Our place was re-released in 2022 and 2023, five years after the initial experiment. With the rapid growth of social media, streaming, and communication platforms like Discord, collaboration was easier than ever. But this also brought stronger competition. Twitch streamers trying to immortalize themselves and show their strength became an issue for other communities. Whether they were trying to secure space or grief others, their impact spread further than this event. Articles like this one state that streamers ruined our place, and others say it was the best thing that could have happened. What if there was a place where Twitch could work together? Could it even last? In this video, I'm on a journey to find out. By developing a place for Twitch, we'll put this to the test and end this debate once and for all. Like this, this is why we can have nice things. This is why. <laughs> So, where do we start? Well, let's break this down into parts. We're going to need to create a web app that will allow users to log in with Twitch and view or interact with the canvas. In addition to the original functionality, we should add some extras like seasons, leaderboards, and showing when someone is live. Not only is it cool, but it also incentivizes people to participate and rewards them for it. This means we'll also need a server. Our server would be responsible for handling all of our Canvas requests, creating records in our database, and Twitch authentication. But having a server isn't necessary to start working on the web app. We can start the project by getting most of the core features in the front end, and then hook up a server for backend functionality. That will allow us to create a prototype that we can polish with code improvements and a nice design. So let's start creating the project. With the project up and running, the first thing I want to do is create the canvas. To do this, we'll use a library called Pixie.js. Pixie.js is a super powerful rendering engine that makes it extremely simple to draw sprites or shapes to an HTML canvas. All we have to do is initialize a Pixie.js application, and we can get an element to add to our site. Okay, so this isn't the craziest thing, but we do have a drawing to the screen now. So the next step is to make it so that when we click, we can get the coordinate on the canvas. So once we get the location of where we're clicking, we can then start drawing the squares. Uh, there's a function to do that pretty easily. So yeah, well, let's just uh, see what happens. After adding tile placement functionality, I made it randomly place one of the original colors to see what it would look like. It definitely didn't look as good as the original, but I was super happy with the progress. So we can click and place a random tile, but I think it's time to add some UI for tile selection. To do this, I'll install one of my favorite libraries to help me style the site, Tailwind CSS. I made some simple changes like changing the background color, making the canvas fit the page width, and then I started implementing basic color selection. <laughs> I mean, you can't get more basic than this. So right now, we're placing tiles by clicking, but this isn't how we place tiles in the original R place. Instead of placing a tile on click, you would click to select a tile and then choose the color that you wanted to place. This allowed groups of people to time when they place tiles to try to take parts of the canvas. So let's do that. All we have to do is add the ability to select a tile, some code to show a selection box, and voila! Next, we should probably make it easier to know what color we're clicking. And I'll also throw in some responsiveness. Okay, now what about making the buttons prettier? and only showing the menu if a tile is selected? <laughs> Sweet. All that's really left is to add a cooldown timer, and then we can start working on our server. So what exactly will our server do? Well, when a client connects to the server, they'll need the current state of the canvas. Normally, when a client requests something, the server might talk to the database to get whatever it needs to serve the request, but Reddit implemented something cool for our place. Instead of getting the information at request time, a cached copy of the canvas would be updated each second so that it's immediately available to be served. 
This way, the server and database wouldn't get overwhelmed handling thousands of requests a second. I think we could implement a really simple version of this. Every second, we would take a snapshot of the canvas and keep it in memory. This way, when we receive requests, we have it ready to go. This would open up processing power to handle other requests, such as authenticating your Twitch account or placing tiles. And speaking of placing tiles, clients will also need to receive updates from the server as tiles are placed. Basically, when a tile is placed, a record will need to be created in the database and a message will be sent to all connected clients alerting them of the new tile. So yeah, this is our server. With the server completed, we've pretty much finished our prototype. Now we can clean things up and start working on branding and the final design. Let's start with the branding. Arguably the most fun part. Ideally, we want the entire experience to be cohesive, from the app design to the logo. Well, I have one word. New Brutalism. You've probably been exposed to it before. Sites like Gumroad, Code Academy, and Figma all utilize key characteristics in their designs. New Brutalism is unique because it almost rejects modern design trends by using dark outlines, hard contrasts, basic shapes, and no gradients. As soon as this came to mind, I knew it was perfect for our project. It's playful, artsy, and doesn't take itself too seriously. Perfect for a website all about creativity. Now that we have our theme, let's start working on the site design. Let's start by blocking out the basic proportions for the site. At the top, we'll have our header. Then we'll have the area for the canvas, an area for the tile controls, and two areas underneath where we'll have the news and the leaderboards. Okay, let's do a rough mock-up for the tile controls and the leaderboards. This is the general idea of what I'm going for, but for now let's move on to the canvas area. First, I think we should make it actually look like a canvas. Then we just need to add a section to show details for the currently selected tile. Sweet, the design is starting to come together. Let's add some borders to separate the content from the background and fix up our tile controls. We'll also add the cooldown timer for placing tiles and a button to log in with Twitch. Looking at what we have, it feels like it's missing something. I think we need some sort of hero section to balance out the design. So let's try adding something at the top. I think the top of the page would be the perfect place to put a countdown until the season ends. The countdown itself won't fill the entire space, so we'll also need something else. Luckily, I have just the idea. Twitch's unofficial mascot, Peepo. I wasn't sure how I wanted to incorporate him at first, but eventually I got the idea to create a trophy. The Peepo trophy will unofficially belong to everyone on the leaderboard when the season ends. Now we just need a logo. I had a couple ideas in mind, but the most important thing for me was incorporating the tiles that are placed on the canvas. It took me a while iterating between different designs until I started to catch on to something. This eventually led me to two designs that I loved. After placing them on the site, the negative space in the second design made it feel a bit too empty, so I ultimately chose the first one. This isn't fully fleshed out, but it's enough to start implementing. And this time, instead of hearing me talk, let's do this montage style. And with that, we have the final product, which meant it was time to put it to the test. Naturally, I started everything off with the first pixel. And then I invited some of my friends to try it. <laughs> I should have expected that. But after a bit of persuasion, <laughs> no, removing it is rigged. We were able to start making something. I'm going to make a full Dutch flag on the top. I got a dog. I don't want a dog. Making a cat. Overall, everything was going smooth. It's a kitty cat. It's easy. Oh my god, the blue's taking so long! Uh, we're done. Kinda winged it. Okay, well, we're not doing dominoes then tonight. <laughs> <laughs> but eventually, they decided to make some interesting art. 
<laughs> what are you making, Liren? Is that gonna be an Among Us thing? Someone is ruining my Among Us character. God, he actually is making it. Oh my god. <laughs> what do you mean? There's just a piece of wall. I know what I'm trying to make or no? Gonna be Teletubby, bro. Yeah. What? And then everything started to go wrong. Uh, I ugh. hate to break it to you, but it looks really morbid right now. It looks like he's got blood all over his arm. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see if I can break this shit. Oh, that's gonna take me a second. I wanted to write this VS code real quick. Don't mind the puddle of poo coming out of the back. <laughs> <laughs> that's literally going to sh**. I'm just DDoSing you right now. <laughs> Is it? Dude, I can't click on your canvas, it's not moving. <laughs> <laughs> no, P is not working. <laughs> yeah, you should probably not make a video in the current state. <laughs> this begs the question, can Twitch actually work together to make something great? Like this? This, this is why we can have nice things. This is why. <laughs> no.